How's it guys and girls? Welcome to The Wild Bird here with myself, Clinton Jarman. Thanks once again for joining me. Uh, thanks to uh, all, the, all the, the people who have liked my page on, on Facebook, The Wild Bird here fan page. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check it out, guys. If you see this video, uh, don't forget to uh, give me a like, uh, go follow the page, um, as well as, you know, subscribe on, on YouTube as well. That's ultimately the platform I want to move this to one day. Um, just waiting for those thousand subscribers, only about 900 away. <laughs> so yeah, guys, so obviously I'm looking for you guys to share this as much as possible so we can get um, those subscri subscriptions up. Um, so yeah, as I do every week, just take you through a run through of, uh, you know, my opinion and and on the latest sports um, stories and, and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I don't just want this to be my opinion. I want to get the opinion of, of the fans in, in general. That's the whole point of the Wild Pro Tier. Um, so the more likes, the more comments uh, I get, then the more I can answer. And, you know, we can get the a snowball effect going and hopefully um, have a platform where, you know, fans can come on um, and phone in and, and all of that sort of thing. But that takes time. Um, but yeah, we're we doing um, what we can for now. Um, but there are plans in the future. So... Um, yeah, so let's get into the, the, the sports side of things, guys. Rugby tonight, um, Curry Cup action, 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, the Pumas will be taking on the Griquas. The Griquas are looking for some revenge. Obviously, they, um, uh, the Pumas, I mean, the Griquas will be looking for some revenge. Obviously, they lost to them in, in the Super Rugby Unlocked competition. That was a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Pumas are one of the smaller franchises, obviously, so uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. But um, the Pumas will turn up tonight. They've turned up in pretty much every game they've played so far. Um, even, you know, the, the Bulls game, they lost 21-3. Um, you know, they, that, that could have been, that scoreline could have been anything uh, with that small union playing against, you know, a, a rampant Bull side. But, you know, they, turn, they tend to turn up in every game. And, 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 you know, I've got a lot of admiration for those guys because... Um, you know, a lot of them haven't played a lot of rugby. Uh, I think the coach was saying in 18 months or something like that. Uh, so, or, or, or eight months or something like that. So yeah, tough one for them. But, um, yeah, I see the Greek was coming out on top tonight. Um, I just think that the, the longer the season goes on, the smaller unions struggle with injuries and, and, and so on. Um, the Greek was also have played probably some, some, some good rugby at times, but some poor rugby at times as well, you know. Uh, they get the lead in, in, in games. I remember they had the lead against the Stormers um, and couldn't see that one out. Um, I think they had the lead against the Lions and then, you know, the Lions ran in three quick tries. So, yeah, uh, from a, a, a Greekers point of view, that would be disappointing for them that they can't see these games out. But um, when you've got the type of quality that the bigger unions have on the bench, uh, it's always likely to happen. So, yeah, other games this weekend, obviously... Um, the the bulls yeah the bulls will be taking on uh, the cheetahs that'll be at 4:30 tomorrow um grudge match for the bulls they'll be looking to win after the cheetahs beat them in super rugby unlocked i think it was the first game wasn't it i think it was the first game yeah but uh bit of a grudge match um i think the cheetahs might take this one again i just had the feeling that the the cheetahs are you know the last two games against sort of the the the, the bigger unions They've uh, they've struggled a bit, so I think they'll be wanting to, you know, they're the ones that were calling for uh, um, the log positions to stay uh, to count for who is going to go into the pro fourteen or sixteen or eighteen or whatever it's going to be. Um, so they'll be keen to to get a win over uh, over the Bulls here because um, you know if they fall out of that top four, then <laughs> you know they're going to be like, well, you guys asked for it, so yeah, it's one of those situations for them. But yeah. I see the Cheetahs winning this one. I think it will be a close game. Um, I got the Cheetahs, I think, on Super Brew by 6. So I think it's going to be a tight one. Um, and then the last but not least, Lions versus my boys, Western Province, uh, at 7 p.m. That is tomorrow night. Uh, I know Simon will be watching the game. Uh, one of the guys who follows the page, he comments quite a bit. Yeah, thank you for that, Simon. Uh, I know Simon will watch the game. I'll be watching the game as well. Um, yeah, I th uh, this is a tough one to call because last time when the Lions came down to to uh, to Cape Town was a very very close game. Um, I felt that in that game though, the Stormers, Western Province, 
uh, made some individual errors. They weren't playing as a team, as a cohesive unit. They are playing as more of a cohesive unit uh, these days, although the loss of the Bulls last week, yeah, that the, was tough. Um, wouldn't suggest that, but I think that they are playing a, a, as more of a unit and there's less um, errors. I think, you know, last week, uh, last week's performance from, from Province, um, I, I just think that they lacked a bit of leadership on the field. And this is where I've got to criticize um, the coach, John Dobson, for... I, I understand that Sia Khaleesi is, is um, coming back from injury and you don't want to risk him getting more injured. But in a tight game like that, I'm sure Sia would have been... Uh, would have wanted to stay on the field. He was sort of huffing and puffing. And then you've got also... Um, you know, you've got a guy like Herschel Yankees and his experience. Although he's young, he's got a lot of, a lot of experience. He's a World Cup winner. You take him off from a similar... And just small things like that. Damien Willems are off as well. Just small... Th although, you know, Damien wasn't uh, having the best game. But you've got to count on your, your experienced players in those moments um, and trust them, you know. I, I just feel like Dobby didn't trust the boys. Um, and he paid for it. So, yeah, I think Western Province will win tomorrow night, though. Um, again, I think it's going to be a close game. The Lions are a lot better than people thought they were. Um, but I think the I think Province will take it by five. Um, yeah, so that is the rugby pretty much wrapped up. Um, so next I want to move on to the cricket. Uh, give me a second to my notes. Uh, yeah, so yeah, cricket stuff, guys. There was some, there was some four day action, uh, this week. Um, starting off with the, the, the one televised game, uh, obviously now Super Sport televising games, obviously on the app on channel 245 and via the website on channel 245 like i said guys these loopholes if you know people that have dstv there's uh, ways <laughs> around uh, watching the games but yeah so cobras they took on the titans uh, in centurion cobras first innings 411 um you know just look at my notes here uh just some notable performance there for the cobras uh, peter milan uh, getting 125 in the first innings, um, and Calvin Savage taking five wickets. Uh, Av Aviwe Mkajima also chipping in with 84 runs in that first innings, 411. Um, and then the Titans replied with 440. So, um, not exactly a pitch you want to bowl on there. Uh, Adam Markram with the third hundred in a row with 113, uh, Neil Brandt uh, with 115, and Makanya with uh, 55 in that innings. And then the Cobras. In reply, 207 for five, the match was drawn. Um, but Peter Milan also chipping in again with 57. So uh, some good consistency there for Peter. Also, just a word on Peter Milan there. Um, a fantastic knock in in the circumstances. You, you think about who's he, who he's playing against here. He's playing against Aiden Markham, the guy's probably vying for his spot. Um, although you could work them into a top three. That's probably what I would go with. Uh, but anyway... Yeah, Peter Milan showing that he's got the he's got the stones for this, you know, showing that okay, you've scored some runs, lad, but you know, I'm the one that's currently in the team. I've I've done okay at the test level. I've shown that you know I can bat at that level, but uh, you putting me under pressure is not going to make me not perform. So I thought that was uh, one of the interesting subplots of, of that game. Um, yeah, so obviously a drawn game there. Uh, yeah. And then the other games, the Lions took on the Warriors. Um, I think it was, yeah, I'll just get the right, um, yeah, Lions versus the Warriors, yeah. Lions, so Lions batted first in this one. Ryan Rickleton, he got a 72 in the first innings. Wesley Marshall with a 145, uh, well batted there, Wesley. Um, and then Vian uh, Mulder with uh, a 91 in the first innings. Susanna Magala took three wickets in, in, in the Lions Bowling and then uh, Bashir Walters in the Lions innings, uh, rolling back the years, taking a five. For, I'm not sure how old he is now. He must be well into his thirty. But Bashir Walters rolling back the years there and uh, uh, bringing his team back into it. Then the Warriors, unfortunately, um, you know they didn't must up a, a decent score in their first innings, 118 all out. So that was a bit of a poor performance from them. Um, but then in the second dig, um, Ryan Rickleton again, 59. Uh, Wesley Marshall, again, 48, just missed a, a, a milestone there. And then uh, Vian Mulder, 100 
off 109 balls, so he was obviously giving it a bit of a, a bit of a whack. They declared for 241. That's the Lions. Um, and then in reply, 436. Yeah, with uh, Rudy second top scoring with 171, and Yassine Navali with 85 as well. Um, so that was a uh, turned out to be a bit of a bit more of a game than the Lions would have uh, expected, but the Lions won that one by 76 runs. Um, and then last but not least, the Knights, they took on the Dolphins. Uh, woeful game for the Knights. Their first innings uh, was brought to an abrupt halt by um, Dupavlon, who, who took seven wickets. And it was, uh, you know, I saw the um, I saw the, the replays of the wickets on, on, on Pitch Vision. Some guy was putting them up on Twitter and you know, it looked like he was bowling this absolute speed of light. Um, so fast bowlers at the moment, we are in a, in abundance. You know, Sisanda Magala taking two three-fers there. Dupavlon, uh, a seventh, a seventh and a fourth in the second innings. Um, and then, you know, with the bat, um, Grant Rulofsson uh, top scored with 73 in the second innings, I think, for the for the Knights, uh, 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 um, if I'm not mistaken. And then, no, sorry, I think that was for the Dolphins. Yeah, anyway, um, and yeah, for the Dolphins. And then um, in their first innings, and then the Knights... Uh, replied with a 2.13, uh, which left 78 to get, which I did quite comfortably. Only uh, notable performance from the Knights was uh, Maddie Kleinfeld getting a 77 in the second dig of that 2.13. Um, you know, Dolphins won out pretty comfortably there, 78 for 5, so they won by 5 wickets. Um, yeah, so just a look at the standings now, guys. Um, so it's a bit different this season. There's two pools, six teams. So at the moment in Pool A, the Titans are top. Um, with two wins, one loss and a draw, uh, 66.2 points. The Cobras are second with no wins, uh, one loss and three draws uh, with 40.8 points. Um, and then the Warriors bringing up the rear with 39.6 points, um, one win and three losses. Uh, that's pool A. And then pool B, now this is the tight one. Uh, Dolphins are top of that one with... Uh, two wins, one loss, and a draw, 66.4 points. Then the Lions are in second with two wins, one loss, and a draw, 64.5 points. Um, and then bringing up the rear, but no, by no means out of it, are the Knights with two wins, one, uh, two wins and two losses, 62.9 points. Now, this is interesting because obviously there's going to be the top two will go into a final uh, format. Um, and then... Uh, then we'll have a winner obviously now group B is obviously nicely evenly poised I think with I think there's still three games to go so um, it's gonna be whoever can 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 get those last couple of wins you know I think I think in all honesty the Titans are probably one win away from topping their group um, but in group B that's gonna be a very interesting group and that's probably gonna go down to the wire uh, probably might even come down to some bonus points there. You know, whoever scores more runs takes f a few more wickets. Some maybe some interesting declarations on the way. I'm glad that we'll get a chance to watch some of these games. Hopefully, you know the televised ones prove to be uh, a bit more exciting than the last one from uh, the Cobras and and the Titans. Uh, the first game was very exciting. Hopefully, the next one um, will will do it justice as well. Um, yeah. So that's uh, domestic cricket sorted. Um, and then, guys, if you want to have a look at the top run scorers and top wicket takers, um, I've taken the time to, you know, put it up on the page. So just looking here on the page now, on my page on the Wild Pro Tier, um, Aidan Markram is first with 469 runs. And then you've got Saral, Irvia, Van Tonde, uh, as well, also in the 400s. Uh, Keegan Peterson, shout out to Keegan Peterson. Uh, a very consistent performer over the last few years um, and a test berth can't be too far away for that lad uh, I mean you know he's been so consistent uh, really second in the runs again uh, Peter Milan also Dominic Hendricks uh, scoring some runs as well Ryan Rickleton is always in the runs Matthew Clanfath always there and thereabouts he always seems to be in the top 10 um, and then Matthew Bretzka as well bringing up the rear there I think that's the top 10 um, so yeah out of those guys no real surprises. I think the only notable mentions here is Aiden Markram with the three hundreds in a row, uh, consistently scoring runs. That and you know that's a, a, a what what you want uh, for a batter. Salar Ivi has been uh, magnificent for the for the Dolphins. Not so well in the didn't do so well in the last game, but he's been brilliant for them. Reina Fantonde, 
Um, the way he scores his runs, I think, is 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 key with him. He scores his runs quickly, and I think, um, I think that he probably needs, I would say, another two seasons. You know, finding uh, his game at the, at uh, at the at the four day level. You know, he is averaging fifty at the moment, but I just think you know that kind of aggressive style is not going to work playing against the best of the best in Test cricket. Um, and then, like I said before, Keegan Peterson, the consistency of the man, he's always in the runs, he's always in the sort of top five run scorers. Um, our, I think he needs to be in our test side. Um, you know, I think our test side needs a, a little bit of a restructure, maybe. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what Fuff's going to do and, and stuff like that, and where, where Quinny's going to bat in the order. But for me, Keegan Peterson's done enough to be there for me. Uh, he, he's consistently averaging about 50. Um, yeah, and you can't really say more than that. Um, and then just going to the wicket takers quickly. Um, wicket takers. Now, the wicket takers is a bit uh, of an interesting one. Um, at the top, you've got uh, Michal or Magal or however you pronounce his name. I apologize for butchering your name, Pretorius. Uh, he's got 17 wickets. Then you've got Jansen from the Warriors. He's got uh, 17 wickets as well. Matusami, 16. Lazard Williams, bowling really well at the moment, 16 wickets. Um, uh, Tabray Shams, he's only played two games and he's got 15 wickets. Simon Van Berg, he's got 15 wickets. Leg spinner. Uh, Sisanda Magala, there and thereabouts as well. That's good to see. One thing about Sisanda Magala that I... It's sort of one of my pet peeves in the last little while is that whenever someone brings him up, his fitness is always the first issue. And I think that that's because um, that issue with him being fit or, or unfit was poorly handled by CSA, by the coaching staff, by everyone involved in that situation. Was just It was poorly handled. Why pick the guy if, he's, if, if you know he's not fit enough or, or to, to standard? But... I mean, you know, the things that I've heard from from people in the know is that him and another player in the squad uh, were in similar positions. They got, you know, um, and the one player got picked and the other one didn't, um, which, I mean, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't bode well because um, they both didn't pass fitness test, but one played for South Africa and the other guy didn't. So you have to ask questions when that happens. Uh what I will say is it looks like he's gone away. It looks like he's worked hard because you can visibly see the weight loss. Um, and he, he's always bowled quick. I think he's one of the one of the premier fast bowlers in South Africa on his day. Um, I think he's one of the best death bowlers. And I think that, you know, with the T20 World Cup around the corner, basically, um, I think we've got to look at him. You know, he bowls a very good slow ball. And one thing he does that our bowlers cannot seem to do at the moment is bowl a Yorker. So I'm very happy that he's taking wickets in the four-day format. Um, one one bit of concern for me uh, is the fact that there's four spinners um, in the top ten, and two of them have only played two games. So you know clearly we have, and it's not it's not a certain type of spinner. You know you've got George Linder, uh, you've got Simon Van Berg, you've got Matusami, and you've got Tabray Shamsi. So you've got four different types of spinners there. Uh, well, three different types. Two left arm orthodox and uh, one uh, Chinaman. I'm not sure what you call that, actually. Uh, but yeah, one one uh, uh, Chinaman. And then you've got uh, Simon Von Berg, who obviously bowls leggies. Um, and again, more and more, you see more and more guys chipping in with, with wickets, uh, off sp like little off spinners and, and that sort of stuff. They're not in, in, in the, uh, the top stats, but they chip in with two, three wickets sort of every game. And that's kind of worrying for me that um, what are we doing about guys um, learning how to play spin and how are we going about it? Um, you know, if, if there's anyone out there that's in the know, can you let me know so we can chat about it? Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, so guys, if you want to check the... The, the bowlers out, it's all there, it's on my page, go check it out at the Wild Pro tier on Facebook. Right, last but not least, we've got to move on to our beloved Pro tiers. Um, you know, obviously a tough, um, a tough, tough week for for Quinton de Kock for the Pro tiers. Um, it's, yeah, it's, um, 
you know what i was um speaking about this the other day um to a guy on twitter and and, and saying um you know the people are going crazy about um the loss and um you know being whitewashed you've got to look at a few factors in my mind you've got to look at um one we're playing one of the premier white ball cricket sides in the world at the moment you know cricket i mean uh, cricket in england has absolutely taken off for the last four years um obviously they won the world cup they play a very um exciting brand of cricket they're always coming hard at you and then you've got to look at the opposite side of the coin you've got to look at the fact that our boys really haven't played much cricket you know there was some scheduled uh, friendly games inter squad games uh but that couldn't happen because of a few covid tests um so when you look at it that way, our boys are a bit undercooked. And especially in the bowling department, you need reps uh, to be able to bowl well in, in a game. It's just one of those things that you can't, uh, you know, certain bowlers can turn up and put it and, 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 and do it on the day. But a lot of our guys didn't go to the IPL. And if they did, they didn't play in the IPL. Only Nokia and Rabada really played um, a lot of games. Uh, one thing I will say is this brings to light, um, you know, Death bowling, and like I said previously, Susanna Magala, I really feel he should be in that squad. You look at a guy like Chris Morris as well, uh, he's, he's done pretty well uh, in the IPL. So, yeah, maybe, you know, I always thought that this squad was a, a, a squad that's just, um, I think it gave a lot of guys, a few guys, um, one last opportunity. And I think uh, looking ahead, to other squads in T20 in the T20 format, especially, I think there's going to be a few changes. I think I definitely think Sasana Magalo has to be in that squad now, um, but we'll see how he goes in the domestic competition as well. Um, and then obviously the 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 three match ODI series starts today. Um, a chance for the boys to get into a bit of a longer longer format. Um, for me, I just think that uh, our coaching staff hasn't identified a way of playing in, in the T20 game yet. It's difficult when it's been COVID and, and, and that sort of thing. But if you look at the way we played against England last time, it was pretty much it was pretty similar. So I think that we've got to identify a way of playing. Either we're going to really go hard at the opposition and put them under pressure, or we're going to play uh, a different type of style. Uh, you know what? In the T20 format, I think we've got the batters to go hard from ball one. Um, if you pick the right squad, I don't, I don't see a problem with, with uh, doing that. Um, but that is the way cricket's going now anyway. So if you look at the way England play, they're going to play the same way in the 50 over games. And if we still don't have the answers, we're going to lose. Um, for me, the, the the ODI series now starting, I think we'll do better in the ODI series. Just uh, we've got more time, more patience. There's a bit of miles under the legs for the bowlers, I think, as well. So I think the bowlers will have to come to the party in a big way in this ODI series. I, I expect the batters to to make the step up. I expect Quinny to do better. He never really goes two series without making um, some big scores. So expect Quinny to, to bounce back. Um, a lot of people criticizing Quentin de Kock in that situation. And uh, I'm not going to criticize the lad too much. He hasn't had the, the, the captaincy that long. Um, and when it's, it's, it's tough when you've got guys who are... Um, bowling the way we did the other day, uh, especially in the last T20 game. You can't set a field, for excuse my language, for cuck bowling because it doesn't matter where you set the field because if you're going to bowl long hops and, you know, and, and half volleys and that stuff, you're going to get, it's going to sail over the field's head anyway. So there's not much I don't think Quinny could have done in that situation. Maybe, you know, going to Sapamla and saying, listen, lad, here's the plan. Uh, try and execute this Yorker outside off stump or this Yorker or that um, delivery or this slower ball or you know maybe try and uh, explain the plan a bit better or what the plan is but it just looked like Quentin was a bit frazzled um, it, it happens I've been captain of sides um, obviously nowhere near that sort of uh, um, level but it happens you get frazzled at times and it's just I think it's just one of those games you've got to just throw away um, and move on to the next one. So ODI series starting. I expect to bounce back from the boys. I still don't think we have enough to beat the world champs. I think it's going to be 2-1 to them. But I think it's going to be... I think it'll be three close games. That's what I think it'll be. Uh, hopefully I'm right. Uh, my predictions of late haven't always been great. Um, and that rhymed as well. 
Uh, but yeah, um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I'm certainly going to enjoy the game. Um, I'm going to have a, a, a couple of brewskis. i uh, got one of my boys coming over. So we're going to watch the game, have some fun. Uh, yeah, guys, I think that's it for now. Um, like I say, guys, go to my page. Go like the page, like uh, uh, on Facebook as well. Um, guys, subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, on YouTube, it's uh, the Fair Digest, uh, the Fair Digest U YouTube channel. So go have a look there. Um, and subscribe there as well guys like i said i want to move this to that platform eventually but we have to get the subscriptions up um also guys just want to say there is some um plans in the works for some interviews and stuff like that um i just need to sort out a few things with my isp uh, you know my router at the moment is i think from uh the load shedding in lockdown my router is like my internet fluctuates so badly uh it's it's yeah it's really bad so that's why i haven't been live uh because i just don't know when the internet is going to be stable or how long it's going to be stable for so there will be some more lives in future there will be some um some interviews as well that i've I've got lined up um so with a few international cricketers and stuff like that so uh look forward to that guys and once again thanks for all the support have a fantastic weekend guys uh, enjoy the cricket enjoy the rugby uh, support the boys and... Uh